Nazi zombies with Evan? Yeah, fine. What time do you want to meet up? Yeah, fine. He says nine. All right, I gotta go. See you at nine, Jake. Yeah, fine. It's my birthday today. The big 16. Four birthday wishes on my wall so far. Make that nine. I love this. Let me see if I got a response to my party evite tonight. <laughs> Just updated my status. In a relationship. And I tagged Julie in it. We're Facebook official. Like. <laughs> Nine people like it so far. Ten people like it so far. Looks like another day sitting at home watching old movies and making candles. Am I the only teenager who likes old movies? <sighs> Why doesn't anyone respond to my posts? Anyone want to wash the afternoon clean and pour some hot wax? Did you get your paper done for class? No, I might have to go home early. You feeling sick? Not yet. Oh, hello, children. Woo! Someone help me! Hey, stop that! If you don't stop, I'll scream. Oh, thank you, dearie. Um, hello? Can't you see I'm on the phone? Oh, no! Sorry, some old lady interrupted me, as I was saying. What do you mean you have another call? Um, what's going on over there? He's mugging that woman! Oh, don't worry! You did not just put me on hold again! Ah. Oh, hello, young man. Someone stop him! Muriel, that youngster has a purse just like yours. Oh my gosh! Are you okay? Don't worry, he won't get away. But he just did. He only thinks he did. I got the whole thing on my phone. Hey, Muriel, can I have a quarter for the gumball machine? Eugene, are you being like for serious right now? I just got mugged like five seconds ago you were here. Did anyone think about calling 911, perhaps? No, oh yeah, that's right, oh, no one did. Yeah. Muriel? Yes? You didn't tell us what the number for 911 was, so... I well, 911 is a good idea. I'll call now. Well, when you call them, give them my YouTube site. They could watch this mugging in almost real time. What does that even mean? I thought we were in real time. Check this out. Wow, that's gotta hurt. I hope I'm not badass and I'm old. Hey, doesn't the mugger look like Mark? You know the guy in history class? I think it is. I'm so posting this on my wall tonight. Brent's still on chat. He wants to know what you're doing. Tell him I'm sending him a video. That old lady's just owning Mark. 22 birthday wishes now. Already three more than Betsy got on her birthday. Still waiting for replies though. Awkward. Jim has us in a relationship on Facebook. I mean, I know we're going out sorta, but I didn't think it was this serious. And he tagged me in a picture. When did I do that? 29 people like this. No response. Doesn't anyone like old movies or hot wax? You were lucky, Tyler. Man, why do people always say that when you have major injuries? Because in your case it's true. You were texting while driving. But I wasn't even texting, all right? I was just reading a text. And besides, that lady was the one gabbing at the... What are you doing now? It's my cell phone. I thought I told you to put that thing away. Well, yeah, I did, but it's in my pocket and I set it on vibrate. Don't you dare. But come on, Dad. I'll get it. I'm not entirely comfortable with that. That's weird. Fine, just don't answer it. <sighs> Fine, go ahead, answer it. All right, hold still. Yeah, I'm trying. Well? It was nothing, just a text. Just a text? Who's it from? Uh, somebody named 
GF. Becky. GF. Uh, yeah, good friend. Good friend. Yeah, Dad. Not girlfriend, because I told you. No, Dad, it's good friend. All right, just uh, just what did she say? Uh, Hig. Uh, yeah, H I G. How's it going? Let me see the cell phone for a second. No. Come on, Dad. Just tell me her number, and I'll call her for you. You can talk as long as you want. I'll tape the phone to your head. Dad, talk. Talk. Yeah. See, Dad, if Becky wanted to talk, she would have called me by now. Just, just let me see the cell phone. No. I'll uh, hold a pencil in my teeth. No. I'll use my nose. Son, you got a problem. Look, Dad, you've got, we've got no time for this. All right, I've got to text Becky back, otherwise she'll think I blew her off. Tyler, it's only been about a minute. Exactly, and in another 30 seconds, she'll give up on me. You're kidding me, right? Look, Tyler. Dad, come on, you've got to text for me. Son, you got a problem. You are addicted to texting. It's time for an intervention. What do you mean? I'm keeping your cell phone for a week. Let's see if you can handle it. No, Dad, you can't. I just did, and I'm banning you from the computer, too. And if you keep on, I'll cancel your cell phone plan entirely. But that's child abuse. Don't push your luck, Tyler. Internet will be next to go. Your week starts now. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. I found a chest hair. I'm still bored. I'm still bored. Pretty sure I'm still bored. Wow, eight chest hairs? <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh-oh. That's not a hair. I'm Googling the symptoms of Lyme disease now. If you wanted to break up, then why didn't you just say so, Tyler? Look, Becky, it's not what you think, all right? My dad took my cell phone. <gasps> you should call Child Protective Services. He took the computer away, too. <gasps> you should call Amnesty International. Yeah, they couldn't help me. I have no idea how I'm going to make it. <gasps> Good morning, class. Quiet down. Sam, I'm marking you late. You're mad at me for that? Who said I was mad? I'm only marking you late. I can't believe you're upset over such a small thing. Uh, I never said I was upset. Well then, why are you making a federal case over it? Excuse me? Just a second. This is a private conversation. Then you should keep it private. What? Go to the office. Lots of privacy there. What did I do? Put your cell phones away. So... How did the reading of Hamlet go last night? What do you think of Act One? Do you like the story so far? Okay, open your books to page 614. Jen. What? Cell phone. Oh, uh, uh, but, but this is class related. Excuse me? Yeah, I figure why I carry around uh... A heavy textbook when Hamlet is on the web. Jim. <laughs> Miss Williams, technology is helping me grasp the nuances of the bard. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, I got that nuances of the bard quote from Wikipedia. And what's really cool is I found this Shakespeare insult generator. That's really cool. You should try insulting me. All right, uh, let's see. Thou droning, motley-minded maggot pie. <laughs> That's really cool, man. Jake, do you even know what that means? I know what maggot pie means. How about motley-minded? That's someone who likes 80s hair bands. Ooh, snap! Back! One, that is wrong. Two, you find most of the meaning in Shakespeare in the context of the play. And three, how on earth do you know anything about 80s hair bands? Wikipedia again. It was part of my research on the mullet. Did you do any research on Hamlet? Did Hamlet have a mullet? <laughs> Not as big as the one on your chest. Ooh! Whoa! <laughs> Let's try this. Carly, what do the guards see what do the guards see as they are on the watchtower? I um I don't know. 
Really? I just forgot. Did you read the assignment? I tried. I really, really did try. I even looked up Hamlet on YouTube. Ooh, what'd you find? Cat Head Theater. It was Shakespeare performed by cats. Did it help? Not really. It was just cats meowing with an English accent. Look, all of you can't just depend on the internet. You miss the beauty and subtlety of Shakespeare. Um, let's try this. What does Marcellus mean when he says something is rotten in the state of Denmark? Jim, are you looking it up on your phone? No. This is my calculator. How is a calculator supposed to help you with Shakespeare? Um, Mrs. Williams, he's playing Tetris. I guess it helps when you have a mental block. Nice pun, dude. Thanks. Turn the game off. That was my calculator. Sorry. <laughs> the guards see the ghost of the former king walking around at night and know that it indicates something. What is he indicating in this quote? Does anybody have an answer? <laughs> Whose cell phone is <laughs> I'm going to wait until I find out. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> Molly, you texted me the answer? Yeah. How did you get my number? I just Googled your name. Duh. Okay. Right. IDK? What does that mean? I don't know. Then why did you text me those letters? IDK. I don't know. I don't know the answer. But read the rest of the text. B4N? Bye for now. Right. Wait! Read the rest. L-Y-L-A-S. Love you like a sister. Hand it in. Thank you. How about everybody else? Tyler, did you read the assignment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. You read the assignment? I have the ink smudges on my nose to prove it. Ink smudges? Yeah, I gotta turn the pages with my nose. Right. Can you explain Hamlet's dilemma for the class? Well, it took me a while. I mean, I only understood like every other word, but the notes at the bottom of the page helped. The notes in the book, you know? Oh, those. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so anyways, um, when he gets to that quote, he's thinking about suicide. Tyler, we're only on act one. Well, I didn't have anything else to do, so I read ahead. Really? Yeah, you know, I actually got pretty involved in the play. Like, uh, when he gets to that quote, he's thinking about suicide, but it goes deeper than that. I mean, are we all just here on Earth to eat, sleep, and take a dump? Or is there more to life than that? You know, something we're supposed to do? You got that from just reading the book? No computer, remember? And it shows that you can learn something from reading. That's good, Tyler. Now, as for the rest of you, here's your assignment for tonight. I want you to write a one-page essay. Oh. A one-page essay on the importance of Marcellus's quote. Nope, I'm gonna Google it right now. Hold on a second. Whoa, Mary says there's a pop quiz in biology today. Did you read the assignment? No. Ask her what the questions are. I don't have biology until fifth period. Good idea. 28th birthday wishes now. Still no response to my party. <clears throat> Ugh, 42 people like our status. And he posted a video. When did I do that? What's wrong, Julie? This? <laughs> Saw it yesterday. Hilarious. Where'd you get that wedding dress? But who's that in the gorilla suit? Look closer. You're at the zoo! Oh my gosh. I hope my boss at the bridal shop doesn't see this. Hey, I got some responses on my wall! You like old movies? What? Are you Amish? 
You must be Amish if you're making candles. Maybe the hot wax is for your legs. Yeah, your legs could use some hot wax. Hairy legs are another sign that you're Amish. Or that you're a man. Confused, are we? Which would explain the mustache. Anyone want to watch old movies and wax Frida's mustache? Oh, hey, what's up? Yeah. Okay, we're not. Hey, what's, hey. All right, whatever. Tyler, where were you last night? Wait, what was last night? Uh, dude, bonfire at Molly's house. I didn't know about it. I sent you a text. I don't have my cell phone. Good. <gasps> the accident, remember? Oh. Yeah. That's too bad. You missed out on a great party. Becky was there, and she left with Max. Wait, she what? <laughs> Sucks to suck. I wouldn't survive a day without my phone. Guys, come on, talk to me, all right? Tell me what's happening. Great, Becky left with Max. I can't believe Dad cut me off. He has no idea. Meet at mall. K. Ride. K. Movie. K. McDee's. K. Party. Why, that would be delightful. I mean, uh, <laughs> K. K. John, thank you for bringing me out here tonight. It's so beautiful. Yeah, the stars are so close we can almost touch them. I've always thought the stars will have a secret, a story. It's no secret. <laughs> what? I know the story of the stars. Really? Do you see it in my eyes? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, but I got an app for that. Excuse me? Yeah, look. That over there is the Ursa Major, and that right there, that's the Ursa Minor. And in between them, that's Draco. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, look, this is so cool. But you've got the stars themselves to look at. Isn't that more beautiful? Actually, my iPad draws the lines for me. You don't get that in the night sky. I wasn't looking for an astronomy lesson. I want secrets, stories. <sighs> Story. I've got an app for that. Listen. Ursa means bear. In Greek legend, Callista was a nymph and a lover to Zeus. Zeus's jealous wife Hera turned Callista into a bear. Callista, while a bear, races to meet her son, who is a hunter. Her son, thinking Callista's raging bear, takes a bow and arrow and shoots her dead. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I got it off Wikipedia, and here's what it says about Draco. Draco Lucius Malfoy was a pure-blood wizard and the only son of- John? John. I really don't care. Oh. Uh. I want romance, love, passion. <laughs> I'm cutting out for that. Oh, my love, like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love, like the sweet melody that's sweetly played in tune. No, that's not what I meant. Okay, that's pretty old school. Do you want something more recent? Oh. Roses are red, violets are violet. Get rid of your restraining order before I do something violent. What? Violet, it's just so hard to rhyme. I want you to do something spontaneous, John. Spontaneous? Yeah, maybe something, uh, I don't know, romantic? Romantic. Can you be a bit more specific? I'm getting thousands of results when I googled romantic. Give her a kiss, boy. Excuse me? Oh, give her a big old smoochero. Oh, Eugene. You are too much. Oh. You want a kiss? Well, the moment is sort of gone. Oh, don't worry. I've got enough for that. <laughs> um. Get your head in the game, boy! Uh. <laughs> Muriel. What? What game are we playing? You cheat! I'm sorry. God. Anyways, <laughs> would you like a peck on the cheek or a brunch kiss? There's also something called an Eskimo kiss. I'm out of here. 
What, you're leaving? Yeah, I've got enough for that. Really? Carly is no longer in a relationship. Wow, that was fast. Ooh, Mildred wants to be friends. Who's Mildred? <laughs> Status is single? When did we break up? And he posted a YouTube link. Oh no, he didn't. What's wrong? Jim posted a breakup video. Too cool, what's the address? 26 people like this? You gotta admit, the Motley Crue soundtrack really does work. I'm starting a new group. Jim is a big fat jerk group. Do you wanna join? I already did. What? Angie started it when Jim broke up with her. It's got 147 members. Could you give us some more time? Of course. Hello? Maximus! How's that first date going? Jim, you gotta help me, man. Say no more. I know you've never made it to first base, cause, let's face it, you're too single <laughs> to single. Really, bro? But, but do you get it though, because of baseball, when you go to first base? Shut up, Jim. I met Leigh Bernadine, like you suggested. I know, I see you. Romantic, ain't it? I can't even afford a glass of water. That's easy. Here's what you do. Make sure you order first. Get the house salad and some water. Just say uh, you're in training or something. That way you look athletic, and you'll have Sarah in that mindset too. Then she'll look at the salad and maybe, just maybe, a diet soda. That works? Every time. I told my twin half-brother Chester to do the same exact thing. He ended up getting the whole volleyball team. Wow, really? All right. I'm ready to order now. Oh. I'll get the house salad and a water. Vinaigrette dressing. I'm in training. Of course. And you is? Um, I'll have the lobster. Very good. <laughs> Jim, you idiot! And a cheery, happy good evening to you, too. She ordered the lobster. The lobster! My mom's hybrid minivan costs less. Calm down. You'll just have to pick up a few more shifts at the Chicken Palace. I'll have to give my firstborn son to the Chicken Palace. <laughs> and much more. But hey, a lobster dinner means she's serious about this date. You may even get a kiss out of this. For a lobster dinner, I should get a wedding in Vegas. Well, the night's not over. Now that you got the little fishy on the hook, time to reel her in with your, uh, with your, uh, Give me two words to describe an idiot. Charm and wit. Reel her in with your, uh, charm and wit. You know what? You're right, Jim. I'm going for it. So, Sarah. Hold that thought. Hello? How's it going, girl? I don't know. I ordered the lobster like you told me to. How'd Max take it? Um, he almost fainted. Almost, that's good. He's still standing after your jab. Now it's time for the knockout punch. Sydney, I don't really like your boxing analogy. Boxing is a blood sport, just like dating. Now pound him. Okay. So, Max. Yeah? When you get married, how many kids do you want? Married? Kids? Jim, you complete and utter moron. Your advice 
has gotten me completely and utterly screwed. Do you hear me? Oh, mom, it's you. <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean your advice. I thought you were... Yes, I'll apologize. Yes, yes. Did you just apologize to your mother? No, she wanted me to apologize to you for my language, so I'm sorry. That's okay, I've heard worse. No, I want to apologize for this whole night. I've been talking to Jim more than I've been talking to you. He's sort of been giving me pointers all night. Really? Sydney's been giving me pointers too. How's that working for you? Well, you know, I don't really feel like eating lobster. What do you say you and I go to the chicken palace? My treat. But that sounds terrific. Sydney? Jim? Want to talk? But... We've both been a little, uh, distracted tonight. You're right. Let's talk. So... So... What do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? When you get married, how many kids do you want? Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> get this woman a lobster. Wait, this wait, woman wait, wants wait. a lobster. Wait, you're paying, right? Like always. It's a song for the broken heart. birthday wishes now, four people might attend my party. Bonfire at Half Moon Lake tonight starts at 8. Man, you know, I really wish I knew what everyone was doing tonight. I mean, would it kill them to just pick up the phone and call me? My party started an hour ago. I guess no one's coming. Hey, Dana. <laughs> oh, hi, Rita. Do you like old movies? You mean like the first parts of the Caribbean movie? I meant like black and white movies. So, like the first part of The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, I like that. Do you like making candles? I've never done that before. Why don't you come over? I'll show you how. I'll make you a birthday candle. Ever seen the African Queen? We can watch that too. Okay, that sounds fun. But instead of the African Queen, let's play Nazi Zombies. I'm here! Let's party! Hi, Grandma. It looks like there's no party after all. Um, where's Grandpa? What do you mean, where's Grandpa? Eugene! Eugene, where are you? I'm coming down the stairs, Muriel. Eugene, we don't have any stairs. <laughs> oh. Why is that? It looks like Greta's the only one who came. Well, count us in. Four is plenty for a party. What are we doing? Making candles and playing Nazi zombies. I tell you what. Why don't you forget about the Nazi zombies? Because Grandpa and I are going to teach you how to make a 
potato gun. A potato gun? A tomato gun? Hey, you jeez. Just, it's just like a quick note, Mrs. Zulu. I hate you. <laughs> oh. A potato gun. It packs a wallet. And when we're finished, we're gonna take it down to Half Moon Lake. Why Half Moon Lake? Because we're gonna teach you guys how to snipe teenage jerks with a potato gun. Mario, look what I can do. Oh, you're bad. Yeah, you always do oh. this. I want to congratulate all the cast members. This is our one act, and not all of them participate in a talent show, so give them a hand, please. It takes a lot of courage to be up here in front of an audience, believe me, and memorize lines and sing for you and do all the things they're gonna do tonight. So I'm really proud of them for having the guts to come up here and put on a show. Okay. So we're ready to start our second half um, without intermission. <laughs> and we are starting with a song um, performed by Alexis Alvernas. She will sing Only Hope by Mandy Moore.
Good job, Alexis. The next performer is Gabriel Texera playing the accordion. He will perform a piece called Vida Teclado by Paulo Almeida. Okay, um, act number three is by Angela Hopper. She will deliver a monologue titled Strict Parents by Talent Incorporated. Stop it. My parents? Strict? Nah. Well, I mean, once I was texting in class, so they took my phone away. Then I got a C on my English report, so they took the TV away. Oh, then to top it all off, I came in past my curfew on Friday, so they grounded me for a week, a long week, without my phone or TV privileges in the house. I had no one to talk to. Except for my mother. <laughs> I talked to her nonstop from the moment I came home from the time I went to bed. Well, being grounded only lasted for three days until she came into my room screaming, I can't take it anymore! Talk to someone who understands what you're saying! So, yeah, they pretty much let me do what I want since then. Good job. <laughs> She's still shaking. <laughs> okay, the next performer is Abigail Solorio. We had a change to the program. Abigail will be singing in Spanish a song titled Como la Flor by Selena. Oh, 
mucho hoy Yo sé perder Good job, Abigail. Act number five is a monologue delivered by Marco Romo. It's, <laughs> it's titled, We Are the Republic from Le Miserable. We can't strike. Why not? Because it's against the law to strike. The king declared that everything is a crime. Writing is a crime? Two weeks ago, the police destroyed the galaxy, the workers' newspaper. They smashed the press and burned over 2,000 newspapers. But that didn't satisfy the king. Three days ago, at a student meeting, a peaceful meeting, soldiers broke it up and arrested two of my friends. Writing, talking, speaking out and going to class is a crime. Being poor is a crime. Being poor is the worst crime of all. And if you commit these crimes, you are condemned for life. Our government has no mercy, no pity, no forgiveness. And there is no work for us. And because there is no work, our children are starving. 
Tell me, brothers, why are we powerless to save the people we love? All of you know. Tell me, why? The king betrayed us. We were promised the vote, and do we have it? Do we have the vote? Where is the republic our fathers died for? It is here, my brothers. It lives here in our heads. But most of all, best of all, it lives here in our hearts. In our hearts, we are the republic. Good job, girls. <laughs> Good job, Marco. Okay, next performer is Jenna Abney. She will sing. Yeah, you can applaud, it's okay. <laughs> Jenna's going to sing You by Chris Young, and she's singing a cappella. Don't seem so blue, and the stars seem to be a little dimmer too. Now that you're around, you put them all to shame. Let me break it down, cause what I'm trying to say is no one gets me like you when you kiss me. Boy, you rock me harder than some downtown band. I thought I knew what love was but i didn't have a clue i never found anything that makes me feel like i do about you got a whole new direction it seems these days i used to rush off to work and get home late but now i show up late and rush back home my priorities are different. I can't leave you alone. No one gets me like you when you kiss me. Boy, you rock me harder than some downtown band. I thought I knew what love was, but I didn't have a clue. I never found anything that makes me feel like I do about you. So oh boy, if you ever get to guessing if I'm thinking about you, just remember that no one gets me like you when you kiss me. Boy, you rock me harder than some downtown band. I thought I knew what love was, but I didn't have a clue. I never found anything that makes me feel like I do about you. You, how oh, you. Very good, Jenna. That takes a lot of guts to sing without music. And happy birthday. Uh, the next act is another monologue delivered by Tiffany Williams. It is titled Street Scene by Elmer Rice. had any time to do much thinking, but I think the best thing for me to do would be to leave New York. Like we were saying this morning, how things could be so different if only you had a chance to breathe and spread out a little. <laughs> I like you so much, Sam. I like you more than anybody else I know, and it would be so nice to be with you, but I'm just wondering how that would work out. I mean, what if something were to happen? Like, say, 
I were to have a baby, what would happen then? We'd be tied down. That's what would happen. I don't think people ought to belong to anybody but themselves. That's why I don't want to belong to anybody, and I don't want anybody to belong to me. I mean, sure, I want love more than anything else in the world, but loving and belonging are two different things. <sighs> if only you believed in yourself a little more, Sam. Things wouldn't, things wouldn't seem nearly as bad. Because once you're sure of yourself, the things that happen don't seem nearly as bad. I have so much confidence in you, Sam. And I like you so much. And I am so, so sorry. Very good, Tiffany. Well, our next performance is a little different and hopefully fun. Three students will be running a couple of improv games with your participation. So when I ask you to say something or clap or anything of the sort, nothing funny, I swear, um, go ahead and participate. The performers are Marcus Martinez, Joshua Wildman, and Gabriel Texera. Welcome to everyone's new favorite improv game show, Question This. Here is your host, known as the guy who plays the accordion, Gabriel Texera. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, thanks for coming out here tonight. We really hope that you've uh, enjoyed the show this far. So right now we've got a game show for you uh, that's a little bit like Jeopardy. Um, so uh, basically how it goes, the contestants are going to pick a category and I'm going to turn to you, the audience, to shout out some examples of things that fit that category. And the contestants are going to buzz in and try to come up with a question that fits that answer. All right, so now uh, let's meet our contestants. We have contestant A. Come on out, bud. Let's give him a round of applause. And then we have contestant 17. Here yes. he is. Yeah. All right. All right, so um, basically how the game will go, uh, let's go with uh, contestant 17. Pick a category. Um, names of Disney princesses. All right, so now I'll ask for this side of the audience to shout out some names of Disney princesses. Anything. Jasmine. Jasmine. All right, I heard Jasmine. Boop -a -da boop Contestant 17. What is my birthstone? <laughs> All right, <laughs> Jasmine, this is the, okay. Um, all right, anyway. All right, um, okay, so yeah, so it goes a little bit like that. So, <laughs> all right, so now, uh, since you guys kind of got how the game goes a little bit, we'll start. Um, since you chose the example, we'll go uh, contestant A, pick a category. Uh, let's go with scientific names for body parts. Scientific names for body parts. Now, this side of the audience, Okay, I heard weenus. <laughs> boop a boop. Contestant. What doesn't rhyme with pudding? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that could have been really bad. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, contestant 17. What sounds a lot like all my school? All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, contestant A for keeping it clean. Give us another category. <laughs> um, how about things you find in a doctor's office? All right, things you find in a doctor's office. This side of the audience now. <laughs> a stethoscope. A stethoscope. Right. Contestant 17. What is a scope that makes you stealthy? <laughs> a stethoscope. Steph. Okay. Ste stealth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boop -a -boop. <laughs> An answer better than his. <laughs> All right, yours. It's your. <laughs> you go next. All right. What is this guy gonna do? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's go with brands of cars. 
All right, brands of cars, this side of the audience. Okay, Lamborghini, all right. <laughs> boop a boop Contestant 17. What sounds like a disgusting Italian cuisine? <laughs> Lamborghini, all right. Lamborghini. <laughs> All right, uh, I think we, that's all that we have time for tonight for this show, uh, for this game. Um, but now we've got another one, right? Yes. Another game show? We another have game. A, a second game called Gibberish Actions, where these two will act out a scene, and coming from you, you'll give them an action. So probably like washing the dishes. Then they're going to ask you what you're going to change about it. So let's say clean the dishes, you want to change the sponge with a brick, so they're going to act like they're washing dishes <laughs> with a brick. It's not that hard, they're gonna act that out, I'm gonna try to guess what they're doing, but the catch is that they're gonna act in gibberish. So I have no idea what they're saying or what they're doing, but I'm gonna try to guess it anyway. And it's gonna be a nightmare for me. Okay, so uh, now so that we can get Marcus out of the building so he doesn't hear uh, any of the ideas, any of the actions, yeah. uh, if we could ask Mr. Silva to please escort. Really? Huh? I don't have to go outside, seriously? Yeah, get out. Uh, so if we could have Mr. Silva <laughs> escort Marcus out that door, please. To tell them the instructions of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Please how's hold. it going? <laughs> so it's like a second. I know. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, alright, so as soon as Mr. Silva comes back in, we'll get it started. Okay, so give us some kind of action that he will be doing. <laughs> All right, biting your toenails. Wow, really, guys? Okay, so um, what are we gonna replace our teeth with? I yes. guess it could, like it could be anything. Butter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I heard butter and scissors. Which one? Um, scissors, I guess. Scissors. scissors. Okay, scissors. That's All right. Cool. Um. <laughs> Butter. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, the toenail would be what yeah, we're replacing and what, now? Yeah, what are we going to replace our toenails with? <laughs> Wait, a cow? Is that what you... <laughs> a cow. Okay, we're replacing our toenails with a cow. And, uh, okay, now, now someone famous that we're biting our toenails with. <laughs> Alright, what? Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Can you hear anything? Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber. Okay, uh, Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber, all right. Okay, we're done with that one. <laughs> okay. All right, um, and then now, uh, for, so now we're gonna do two, so give us a sport, any sport. All right, baseball, baseball. Baseball, baseball all right. Baseball. <laughs> All right, and then now, uh, what are we replacing the bat with? Fish. <laughs> okay, all right. It works, a fish. A okay. fish, all right. Um, and then, what are we replacing the ball with? Anything. <laughs> a face? A face? A face? Oh, a head. Okay, a head. A head. All right. A head. <laughs> all right. Oh my God. You guys are monsters! Okay, and so, uh, alright, whose head are we using, I guess? A famous person. LeBron James! Alright, LeBron James, LeBron James! That I understood! <laughs> LeBron James, alright. <laughs> alright, uh, so, for the first one we have, we're biting our toenails. Uh, we've replaced our teeth with scissors. Uh, we've replaced our toenails with a cow. And, uh, and uh, we're biting our toenails with Justin Bieber. And then for the sport, we're doing baseball. We've replaced the bat with a fish. We've replaced the ball with a head. And it's LeBron James. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so, uh, all right, so if we could have Marcus come back in. Oh, uh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. 
before I start guessing what you guys came up with, I'm scared. You <laughs> should be. Yeah. Oh, really? Is it yes. that bad? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask you, the audience, to applaud when I get it correct, because I'll have no idea otherwise. So give me a little golf clap when I'm close, when I'm almost there, I'll, and give me a thunderous round of applause when, like that, when I get it right. So let's try that now, golf clap, let's try a little golf clap. Now, thunderous applause. Now, tap your head and, spin, and no, rub on your stomach. No, don't. No, do yeah, oh, I got, I got some of them. Woo! Interesting. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, good job, boys. That's really hard. Just improvise on the spot with an audience. All right, last but not least, 
Our final act is a song performed by Lexi Silva. <laughs> vocals and Daniel Costa <laughs> in the guitar. It is titled Skinny Love by Bon Iver.
Okay. And now for the curtain call and to end the show, something definitely a little different and just for fun. I'm going to join the show and sing. <laughs> uh, it's not that great. <laughs> um, so bear with me. It's just for fun. And I've known this song forever, but I seem to have a mental block the last couple of days, and I keep forgetting the lyrics. So like I said, bear with me. <laughs>
Yeah, she's like, Miss Lee moves. I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh. You know, I can hold it. Thank you. I feel loved. <laughs>
Uh, even though he's not in drama this year, he joined us for the performance, and he did take drama for two years, and he's with us tonight, so we wanted to make it special. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like, or we would like, sorry, to recognize a senior that was part of the crew, not the cast, but still here with us helping out for, the, for this year. Uh, he's been in drama, well, one year, um, as a member of the house crew, so Austin Bispo. Okay, so Alexis put together a few questions few questions, bleh, sorry, <laughs> for our seniors, and as I call their names, she will read their answers, and they will come up and get their little recognition. It's a little emotional, I'm sorry. Okay, I got it. Uh, we're going to start with Gertrude Sooner, if I said that correctly. Gertrude is in drama one year. Uh, she was a stage manager for the last play, and she's also an actress, and she designed the logo for both performances. Okay, she um, said that every day was a memorable moment. There was always something new, fun, and creative to do. She is glad she took this class and will always remember every moment she spent in this class. She would. She would like to thank Ms. Lemos for being a great teacher and a person as well, and giving her the opportunity to act in this play. She would also really like to thank everyone who was in the play with her, because they made her laugh, they made her enjoy, and most importantly, made her talk. <laughs> she loved this class and loves her classmates. She also wants to thank her parents for their encouragement. Okay, next senior, please step forward, Matthew Fernandez. <laughs> and Matthew has been in drama partially for two years, one semester the first time and one semester this time, and he's worked as crew and as an actor. Okay, his most memorable moment was playing Santa Claus in The Nightmare Before Christmas in the sixth grade. <laughs> and being Santa Claus on the fire truck around Turlock. <laughs> he would like to thank his parents for encouraging him and his grandparents for being there for him and all of his classmates for making this class fun. Okay, uh, Joshua Waldman, please step forward. And Joshua has been in drama for two years as an actor, and um, also there's been quite a few of them, but every time that I need somebody really tall to help out, there's Josh with the ladder for the mics, anything that I ask, so there you go. Okay, his most memorable moment was last year when Miss Lazariga had, had us do a parody assignment and they called it Jawar Hello, it was a spin off of Mulan. Um, he had to dress up as a girl and wear makeup, heels, and a bra. <laughs> he would like to thank Mrs. Lemos, Marcus, Tiffany, and Gabe. Okay, <clears throat> Tiffany Williams. <laughs> so forward, Tiffany. We're going to embarrass, oh, Tiffany, okay, she's crying. Uh, Tiffany has been in drama for two years as an actress. Her 
Her most memorable moment was getting a role in her first play, Promedy. She would like to thank her friends, also known as Marcus, Josh, Jenna, and Alexis, for getting her into drama and helping her enjoy it. She would also like to thank her mom for support supporting her. Okay, Diana Hernandez. <laughs> Diana has been in drama for three years, as crew and as an actress. Did you skip last year? I thought you were with us last year. Wait, two years. <laughs> My bad. Okay, her most memorable moment was when she froze on stage during the play Promedy. Marcus saved you, right? Marcus saved me. Yes. There we go. Okay. Love you too. She would like to thank Miss Lemos, her friends and family, for all their support and for all their loving support. Okay, Mariah Her. And I think I got this right. Mariah's been in drama for three years. <laughs> as crew and as an actress. Her most memorable moment in drama was getting the, getting the opportunity to spend her last year with her sister, Jasmine. Aww. She would like to thank all her friends, family, and Mrs. Lemos for their loving support. Okay, next, Marcus Martinez. And Marcus has been in drama for three years as an actor. He is a handful but very supportive as well. Yeah. <laughs> his most memorable moment was when he got his first applause at the end of Twelfth Night. <laughs> he would like to thank his family and friends for all their loving support. Also, for, also Miss Lemos for giving him his first opportunity. No, no. Oh, okay, I thought you were picking me up. <laughs> I'm like, please don't pick me up. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> okay, and Lexi Silva. <laughs> Lexi has been in drama for three years. As an actress and assistant director, she's been my right hand this year. And um, <laughs> I just, for some reason, have to share this. She used to be really shy. She was my uh, student in my English class freshman year, and she barely said a word. Um, and then um, this is what I did to her, which is a good thing. <laughs> Her most memorable moment in drama was filming their one act, White Chicks, her sophomore year. She would like to thank her parents for supporting her in her performing endeavors. Endeavors? Endeavors. <laughs> Sorry. Endeavors. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. And her friends for being her family, and Mrs. Lemos for giving her the opportunity to develop her potential. Okay, well, we wish all the best to our seniors, and if they decide to pursue drama after high school as a hobby or maybe as a job, uh, they have my support. I'll always be here for them, um, and um, we love you guys, so best wishes. That's it for tonight. <laughs> <laughs>